It's a joy that we have come to the month of December. The month of December is uh, very important to many people. But what is important in our presentation today is that we're going to discuss knowing the truth and the will of God. This is a very important topic. Knowing the truth and knowing the will of God. Knowing the truth is so important because we cannot live a life that is ignorant about what is truth and the will of God. We understand that the truth that we're going to present this, up, this afternoon is really inside where God is in his sanctuary. And so, what is the truth in the end time that we need to understand as we claim as people of God? So there is a time because there will come a time where truth is so precious and is so difficult to find because the world is in confusion. The most important question we need to ask is the question that leads us to eternal life because what are all these things in the world? The question that leads to eternal life is, what is truth? What is truth? And there are so many thousands of answers. But we narrow it down in a qualification by saying, which truth? What is truth that would lead people to Christ, to God, and in the end, has the eternal life. As far as I know, there are three solid strands of what is truth. And let us limit our understanding of truth in the Bible because the Bible claims what is truth. Number one, the word of God is truth. John 17, 17, Jesus says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Meaning to say, the entire Bible is the word of God. Therefore, this is the truth. Second, Psalm 119, 160. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgment endures forever. According to the Bible, when we have two or three witnesses, then everything is justified. So, your word is truth. Repeated in Psalm 119, verse 160, your word is truth. And 2 Samuel 7, 28, for you are a God, a sovereign Lord. Your words are truth, and you have promised these good things to your servant. Meaning to say, we have a solid foundation that the word of God is the truth. That is the first strand, solid strand of what is truth. Because we need to have a reality check. Because many people claim today that they have the truth. But it is not really the truth. If it is not whole truth, if it is a half truth, then it is not. So, second, Strand, Psalm 119, 142. Your righteousness and everlasting righteousness. Your law is truth. Now this is a connecting. The word of God is the truth, is the truth. And now the law of God is truth. 
Psalm 119, 151, you are near, O Lord. All, who command, all your commandments are truth. This is a very important because there are so many people today who discarded the law, the commandments of God. That's why we have this miserable society in the world. Why? Because many churches and clergy preach, we don't need God's law. We don't need God's commandments. We are in the grace. But this truth stands forever. Your law is truth. Your commandments are truth. That's why Jesus says in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. The surest indication that we love Jesus is we keep his commandment because his commandment is truth. And his commandment is found in the word of God, which is the truth. You try to notice where this word was taken. If you love me, this phrase is rooted in the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, verse 6, with a slightly different expression used in Revelation 14, 12. Whoever keeps the commandments of God is assured. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. This is very clear. Meaning to say, if we know the, the truth, what is truth, which is the word of God, and we know the second strand of the truth, which is the law of God, which is the commandments of God are truth. It is the surest way because it, say, it tells us that those who do his commandment have the right to the tree of life and enter the gates of the holy city that is in Jerusalem. Therefore, if we claim that we have the truth, which is the Bible, but the second strand, we reject it because we don't need the law and the commandment, then we don't have the whole truth. We have the half truth, and half truth is a lie. No wonder why. The book of Proverbs, 28 verse 9, the one who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is abomination. How do you like to have a prayer by which your prayer is abomination? Because you don't want to hear the law of God because it is a legalist. This is wrong. It's not a legalist. It is doing and obeying the truth because his law is the truth and his commandment is truth. And again, Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Walking, meaning to say, we serve under the banner of Jesus Christ. And say, blessed are those who walk in the law. You cannot find transgressor of the law who are blessed. It is always those who keep the law because the law is truth. In fact, the prayer of the psalmist, he says in Psalm 119 verse 18, Open my eyes that I may see the wondrous things from your law. And many people want to close their eyes with the law of God. This is the truth, the second strand of the truth. In fact, the psalmist says, I made haste. I did not delay to keep your commandment because that is the truth. So I shall keep your law continually forever and ever. This does not change. But people out there, that's why our society is a mess, is in trouble, is in a problem because... Out of many thousands of pulpits, people are saying we don't need to keep the law, keep the commandments of God, and the misunderstood and outrightly rejected that the law of God, the commandments of God are truth. In these things, we need to understand. That's why the psalmist continued. 
He said, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. And they are ever with me. I have more understanding of all my teachers for your testimony are my meditation. Did you get what's the, what's, what's the impact of the law to the psalmist? Oh, how oh, I love your law. Meditation all day. Your commandments make me wiser. Why? We are making our society put in order of how we behave. Acceptable behavior when we obey even human laws much more with God's law, which is the more highest in order. Some verses 172. For all your commandments are righteousness. I long your salvation, O Lord. Your law is my delight. Have you, have you experienced that? That keeping God's law as a truth makes us really happy with delight. i just give you one example. Violate the traffic regulation. You will be in trouble. Obey the traffic rules. There's nothing. It's enjoyable to drive. But violate. Run. When it is a red light and you have a red problem a minutes later. And again it says in verse 163, but I love your law. In fact, seven times in a day I praise you because of your righteous judgment. Great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. Lord, I hope your salvation and I do your commandments. This is the second strand of what is truth. Let me repeat. Your word is truth. Your law and your commandments is true. The third strength, the realization of the entire truth of God. Jesus is the truth. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, we have this full realization of truth. The truth that is embodied in Jesus Christ. As we have seen. His word is truth. His law is truth. Jesus is the truth. There is no contradiction. But that is the definition of the Bible of what is truth. Many times in the New Testament, people have encountered Jesus in person and they did not know. That he is the truth. Just like Pilate in John 18 verse 38. Pilate said to him, what is truth? And we had said this. He went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him at all. If Jesus had no fault at all, then he is truth. Pilate missed the truth only by insist or meter away. What an opportunity to lose eternally. This is a problem. Jesus is the embodiment of the entire truth that God wants to reveal to our world. Now we have learned his word is truth, his law is truth, Jesus is the truth, and we have to accept this truth. So, God's word, God's law, and Jesus is the truth. No one will be the truth. It is non-negotiable to God. You just obey his word, but you don't obey his law. Because they have the same author. So we need to search the truth. That is Christ in scripture. Jesus says, search the truth. Because the, the scripture, because it testifies of me. We need digging. Search the truth, the word of God. Jesus says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8.32 Because you cannot change the truth, 
but the truth can change you. This is the reality. There is also called the present truth. That's why I named this ministry present truth. Meaning the truth needed today where we can find where Jesus is because the truth is his word, his law that we need to obey lovingly and to love Jesus, the truth and the life and the way to the kingdom of God. So there is a present truth. What is a present truth? The present truth is what we need to know for our time. For example, our time to the people are so worldly, so absorbed in the world activities and passion and custom and being religious and God sometimes is placed in the corner. When Christ was on earth, he was the present truth. Now Jesus is in heavenly sanctuary as a high priest according to Hebrews 8 verses 1, 2. And 3 and chapter 9, verses 11, 24. The present truth is eternally linked with the last saving work in behalf of his people who love, believe, prepare for his personal coming. What is the present truth that you need today? What is the present truth that we need by all people so that we may understand the whole truth? His word, not selective. Because many people read the Bible and select what they like, but they, they, they neglect and reject. The Bible says, your word is truth is in its entirety. Let us remember what happened. According to Daniel, the sanctuary was cast down. The truth was cast down. We must know the truth that the little horn cast down for many centuries from dark ages to modern and postmodern times. The truth of the plan of salvation in the sanctuary and supplanted by error. Daniel 8 verses 11 to 12. He, the little horn, exalted himself as a prince of the host. That is Jesus. By him, the daily tamid sacrifices that there in Hebrew were taken and the place of his sanctuary was cast down because of the transgression an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices he cast truth down to the ground he did it all this and prospered from dark ages until today the whole world has not seen Clearly the truth. They are so confused because others are saying, trumpeting, this is the truth, this is the truth. But let's look, where is the truth? And we need to understand which truth that was cast down is the truth related to salvation. And since in the sanctuary, inside the sanctuary, especially the box inside, there is the Ten Commandment, so that truth was. That's why instead of the Bible, the word of God, human philosophy, human reasons, human concept, human ideology, bereft the truth that the law of God, his word, which is the ultimate guide towards a closer relationship with God and his kingdom has been cast down. So there is an imperative for everyone. According to Amos 3, verse 3, can two walk together unless they agree? There are people who think that God is agreeing the way they walk. It is clear. Can the two walk together unless they agree? How can you say that you are walking with God and you are grossly violating the word, which is the truth that is the law and the commandments. So let me move now 
Knowing and obeying the truth and the will of God is not negotiable. It's not negotiable. Cannot be changed by that reason. Cannot be changed whatever legal enactment of the land. God's truth will stand forever because the truth of God represents and parallel to his character. God's truth and God's will. No substitute for obedience. We found that in the, in the book of Samuel. Because there is the first king who always justified, I have obeyed the word of the Lord, but actually he obeyed some partial. Later on, he died. Because he committed unpardonable sin. God's truth and God's will go together. We must know and obey because it is not negotiable to God. There are a lot of questions. Since I was a young pastor, now still one young years ago, people always ask, what is God's will for me? So I'm now discussing what is God's will. Let's compare the wise and the stupid and fool. You know the truth and the truth will set you free, Jesus says in John 8.32. However, the fool, the stupid is this. Knowing the truth, seeing the truth, but still believing the lies. The Bible called that stupid, fool. And we don't want to be labeled as fool or stupid. But whether we like it or not, we are full and stupid when we know what is truth, saying the truth, not obeying, and keeping the truth, we are full. There is a God-given task to all mankind. Jesus, in his model of prayer, Matthew 6, verses 9 and 10 says, When you pray, pray this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The question, did all mankind do the will of God on earth as it is in heaven? Because the loyal angels who follow God's will retain in heaven, but those who did not follow his will join with Satan in rebellion against God. All of them were cast out according to the book of Revelation chapter 12. So our God-given task is to do God's will on earth. Because when we do it on earth, it is, we call reverberation, we keep it according to the standards in heaven. So Psalm 40 verse 8, I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is it within my heart. The will of God is connected to the law. It is clear that billions of people on planet Earth did not know and reject and did not obey and follow God's will on Earth. There are thousands of reasons, but the highest reason is that the Word of God, the Bible, is not carefully read, ignored, slight, reject its authority as ultimate guide in knowing God's will. This is a big problem. So there is a human struggle inside us who dominates. When we know God's will, who is controlling our mind? You know, God is a powerful God. This is what I learned. He is so powerful and yet he is so powerless. Because when we do not do and obey his will, he allow us our choice to do it. 
Who is dominating? All is a matter of personal choice. It is God's way or my way. This is a decision that we need to decide for eternity. Yes, there are so many ways we think because it is our own self-centered, not God-centered. God's way is the best way. In fact, I rather work in the total darkness with God if that is His way rather than walk in the daylight with thousands of people which is not in God's way. God's will is always with righteousness. So the question, it is God's will or just our my will? Our will is very powerful. Our constant prayer and pleading should be like the psalmist. Psalm 143 verse 10. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of that brightness. That is walking in his will. I like that. Teach me to do your will. Because we have our own will. And most of our will are so dangerous. When our will submerges and subdued the love and the grace of Jesus, then our will will become sanctified. And we can walk in his will, just like Enoch. He walked with God 300 years. This is a challenge. In fact, the Bible says he will teach us his ways. We shall walk in his path for out of Zion, that is the city of God, the law shall go forth and the word of the Lord for Jerusalem. Micah 5, 8. He will teach us his way, his will to do. He gave us the capacity. This is the problem with many people. You can cannot keep the law wrong. God does not give a command that we cannot keep. Because once he commands, he provides grace that we are able to fulfill. Because what we are fulfilling is his will and his word, which is truth. Why? There is a question. So, it is as God's will because it is a God's will because it is found in scripture. It is not God's will when it is against the scripture. There are many ways by which the will of God is presented. I call this the manifold wisdom of God's will and many pulses and aspects and faces found in the scripture. God's will is what we would choose if we had his wisdom. The problem today is that most people don't have wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is a gift of God by which when we learn knowledge, understanding, and all these things, we can discern which is right and wrong, and we follow what is right. That is wisdom. Sometimes wisdom in, in a layman language is a common sense. Many people have no common sense. Because we know this is right. You do it because it is right. And that is God's will. Let's look at Proverbs. Solomon says, Proverbs 4, verses 5 and 7. Get wisdom, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And in all your getting, get understanding. He repeats it. In chapter 8, verse 11, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all other things one may desire. What? Cannot be compared with her. 
Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, fear of the Lord is equal to obedience to God's word, and that we call wisdom. That's why we understand, no matter how educated you are, without wisdom, your education is earth-centered, human-centered, rather than God-centered. The surest indication of God's will is clear. It is not the will of God. It, it is go against the word of God. In fact, Jeremiah 79 says that the heart is deceitful above all things. Do not follow your heart. Follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit. The problem sometimes because there are many Christians who malign the Holy Spirit. That's why they cannot understand the will of God. They lost wisdom. So my question is, which camp do you belong? Because there are only two kinds of people in the earth. Those who say to God, your will be done. And those to whom God says, all right then, have it your way. They are beyond God's reach of mercy. Where do we belong? God revealed his will and differentiates. John 7, verse 17. If anyone will is to do God's will, he will know whether the teaching, my teaching is from God or whether I'm speaking of my own authority. Ah, one of the will of God is that we believe Jesus' word because his word is truth. That is the will of God. 2 Peter 3.9, the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but he is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but all should reach in repentance. Meaning to say, God's will, he is slow because he is so patient and his patience should be responded with repentance. Because he wills that all people will be saved, but yet billions of people don't care. Ephesians 5, 17. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand the will of the Lord is. So did you see that we understand? The fool, the stupid, the foolish. Who does not understand God's will? Who does not understand God's truth? What is the will of God? What is the will of God for my life? These are just few questions that come to mind when discussion arises about this topic. But I want you to learn what Jesus says. In Mark 3.35, where his brothers and sisters were trying to find him because there was a report that Jesus was not really acceptable in that particular area. And there was a church that he was already out of his mind. He was crazy. And so the mother and brothers and sisters want to get him. And you know what was the answer of Jesus? Because the people say, here comes your mother. Your brother and sister. And Jesus says, No, for whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and my mother. That's crucial. We identify with Jesus when we do the will of God as his brother and sister, mother and father. It is crystal clear that the redeemed family of God are those who do the will of God on earth as it is done in heaven. No other choice. Sometimes we abuse God's love. Well, he understands. God understands us. Yes. 
But did you understand God? The two must be corollary so that we may understand. Matthew 9, 6 verses 9 and 10. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the surest entrance for people to go to heaven is to know the will and obey the will of God that is the truth. Because, we discussed it earlier, half truth is a whole lie. Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father which is in heaven. And sad to say, many Christians are interpreting this text as if those who are not believers. This is spoken to really the people of God. He does the will of my Father. Romans 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. By testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. There's a blow. Renewing our mind. Because our mind is wired that desire that is fleshly, earthly, humanly, and heavenly things are dismissed and replaced. That's why we have Paul says, we have the mind of Christ. Discern what is the will of God. The will of God as revealed in scriptures. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, Paul says to the Thessalonians, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What an interesting Give thanks in all circumstances, in all season. Whether you are disappointed, you are discouraged, or what, give thanks to the Lord. Because this is the will of God. But we do more and more complain and all other things, and we destroy our connection to God because we have not followed His will. Because there's no problem so big that He cannot handle. We cannot burden him with all our anxiety, our problems, and all this that preys us down on planet Earth. It is not. Give thanks. I said, in one of the classrooms, I thought it's because a young boy came to me and said, Pastor, my sweetheart, separated me. I said, oh, well, give thanks. And he looked at me with amazement. What is that? I said, that's what the Bible says. Because if you meant with each other, there will be a time you can be still. But if it is not the will of God, then... Circumstances, time and events will change this, that you are not meant for each other because in all circumstances, we give thanks. That's just like Job. That's why the Bible says Job is a showcase of God's character. Because in a matter of hours, everything was sweet. And yet, he said, His name I praise. He praised the Lord. He gave thanks. That's why he told his wife, can we accept only what is good and the other things we will not? In all circumstances, we give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. Second first Peter second to fifteen, for this is the will of God that by doing good you should put silence the ignorance of foolish people. Doing good. 
No string attached. Do good because it is good. It is right to do good rather than there is an ulterior motive of doing good. This is the sins of many people. We are not politicians. We are a people of God. So doing good because there is one that is good. Jesus said, no one is good except God. When we do good, we do the work of God. So doing good is the will of God. Doing by the nibble and all these things is the will of the enemy of God. Paul again says in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. What's that? This word does not get a hearing today. It is the will of God, your life of holiness, sanctification. But today you can understand. When we look at the world, the church is there. When we look at inside the church, the world is there. Where is the sanctification that separates God's people from the world? This is the will of God. A life of holiness. When you discuss today, time to be holy. <laughs> when you have become so holy, you will go beyond heaven. In Visayan expression, Sobra ka pagkatarong, pagkabalaan mula pas ka sa langit. Ang pagkabanal mo daw, eh, hindi ka madala sa langit. Ay lalampas ka pa sa langit. Hindi ka makaabot diyan sa ulap, lalampas pa. What a logic! Sanctification is the will of God. I'm discussing now the manifold aspect, phases of God's will. Because God's will is not only one. Yeah, actually, it's a one whole package with an aspect and phases and circumstances. We need to love God. Knowing the Lord, doing His will, this is what happened to Paul when he met Jesus on the road of Damascus. And we understand what Paul was doing. He persecuted the Christians. He has a letter from the high priest. And those who follow Jesus should be persecuted. And one of them was stoning of Stephen. He witnessed and he, his hand affirmed of his death. He thought he was doing God's will. He thought he was doing the truth. Diametrically opposed. And so when he was blind, he was able to see. And he said in Acts 9, verse 9 and 10, Who are you, Lord? What you want me to do? Here is a man, 180 degrees, turn. He understand that what he was doing was contrary to the truth, contrary to the will of God. And so, he stayed in Arabia according to Galatians chapter 8. Three years, he unlearned what he thought was truth. Because this is a dangerous thing. Galatians 5, 1, 3, and 5. Grace to you and peace from the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sin that he might deliver us from the present evil age according to the will of God the Father to whom be the glory forever and ever. What's the will of God? That Jesus would die on the cross because of our sin. That is God's will. We must accept his death as our sacrifice because he is the surety. No one can sacrifice because Everything that demanded by the law and the character of God, only Jesus can qualify. John 9, 31. We know that God does not hear a sinner, but anyone who worships of God and does his will, he hears them. This is in a conversation. Because there was a man who was born blind and deep. But you know, the true worshiper 
Is that do the will of God? Peter again says in 1 Peter 3, 14, 17, but even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts. Why? Towards then, it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. What's the will of God? Suffering. And a term we don't want to earth in turn because we think we become a Christian. Our pathway is a pathway of roses. Sunshine. There is no dark clouds and typhoons and horrendous rains that comes. That is not the will of God. The will of God, when it is to suffer, we need to suffer because of doing good, but rather doing bad. If you are doing bad, sabi pa sa mga sibuano, merisi. Tama yan sa'yo. Karma. We need to understand. Suffering is a joy. Because we participated in the suffering of Jesus Christ. You want to go to heaven and you don't want to suffer what Jesus suffered? If he had no sin, he suffered. How much more for us who are sinners and we don't need to suffer? There's many forms of suffering. But that is the will of God. In 1 John 2.15, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not the Father, but of this world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. This is clear. And I'm so fascinated with this verse. Because when I look at it in Greek, the word love is agape. Agape love can be misused and abused by loving this world. And the agape love of the Father, we abuse. If we do God's will, we abide forever. I like that. Your word abide forever. Your law abide forever. And those who obey the truth and obey your will will abide forever. For it is not God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. All things without complaining, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless, harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights of the world. We do. It's a pleasure. This is the problem of a sinner. Let's not go to the application of God's truth. And God's will. First Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Since you have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of brethren, love one another. Fervently, with a pure heart. Having born again, not corruptible seed, but incorruptible. Through the word of God, which live and abides forever. Here is our challenge. Purifying our whole person by obeying the truth. In his second letter, Second Peter 2, 5, 9. Here is now the ladder that we need to climb. But also for this very reason, give all diligence. I like that. With all diligence. Put your best. Everything you have. Add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, perseverance, to godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love, agape. If you do things, if you do these things, 
Our years are abound. You will never be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he who lacks this thing are short-sighted or even blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. We need to climb. Faith, knowledge of God, self-control, perseverance, godliness. We discuss this. Brotherly kindness and agape love. This should be the applications of the truth. Walking in the truth and walking in his way. My brothers and sisters, in the end time, we need to seek God's truth and God's will. Let us pray to the Lord that we have the delight to obey. Because when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. And where to find the truth in his word? We find it in his law. We find it in Jesus Christ as the ultimate. And we find his will in different manifold wisdom of God. When we do this, there is a surety of our salvation. The Lord bless us. Seek the truth. Seek what is truth. Seek what is God's will. Determined by his power of the Holy Spirit, delight to obey because they are non-negotiable. May the Lord bless you. Each one of you, each one of us who are listening to this message. God is calling. You do my will on earth as it is in heaven. When we do it. There is a blessing. Because we land in his eternal kingdom. This is my prayer.